fast start, test complete, module six, objects, properties and methods. So in this module, we're going to look at how test complete interacts with our applications under test. And the core concepts in this come down to the objects we want to interact with, the properties of those objects, and the methods that those objects have. All of this can be best explained from the object browser within Test Complete. The object browser shows us Test Complete's view of the system under test and the applications under test within that system. Now the objects can be thought of as processes, applications or windows that are present on your system. So these are the things that are present on your system at any one point in time and some of them might be visible like this window for example and some of them may be invisible like a process. All of those objects will have a set of properties and a set of methods associated with them. So if we click on this window which is actually a button object, for example, that window or button has a set of properties, which is displayed over here on the right, and a set of methods. Now the properties can be considered as characteristics of the object. For example, this button has a height of 36 pixels, and that is one property and associated property value for that equals button. So each property has a name and a value associated with it. Index, index value 21 for example. The methods then can be considered as the actions that that object can carry out. For example, in this window or button object again, you'll see that we have a method in here called click. So we can click that object, which is effectively a click on that button. So if we call that method, it completes the action on your system against that specific object. So in the list of objects then, in the main panel on the left here, we have some menu items on the top, and those menu items can help us filter the list of objects so that we're only focusing on the ones that are of importance to us. So the first button on the left then is the show tested applications only. So in your workspace, when you have a list of tested applications, the applications listed on there will be the only applications listed in your object list when you select display tested applications only. This enables us to filter out all of the other superfluous stuff on our system and only focus on the application under test. So the other options in here then are, once we've deselected that, the show all user processes. So if there are other processes for other users logged onto this system, that will show those processes as well. And then there is also the show system processes button here, which will show Windows specific processes running on your system. The next useful button then is the show invisible objects. Now some windows aren't actually displayed on your desktop, but typically when you're automating an application you only want to interact with those visible objects, but if you need to see the invisible objects you can select that button and any objects, windows for example, that aren't displayed will also be listed in this objects list and the hierarchy displayed in the object browser. So for example here you can see this window here if we look at the properties for that and scroll down it has a visible flag set to false so this might be a window but it's not a window in the usual sense of the word that we see displayed on our desktop. Making sure that's deselected or selected enables us to see those invisible objects in the list. Finally, there's the refresh button, and that refresh button will refresh the list of objects and get test complete to make sure it's running with the current list of objects. 
One of the useful feature in this view is the context sensitive menu. So if you right click on an object, you'll get a context menu. And from here, you can do things like highlight on screen, you can refresh all the child objects, you can even add a process to your tested apps directly from here, which is very useful. And in the same vein as uh, Process Explorer in Windows, you can terminate the process from here as well if you need to. So what that leaves us with then is one last thing to look at, which is the naming convention used by Test Complete to identify your objects. You will notice that in every test you create, so if we look at test one, for example, in here, whenever we interact with an object, we need to name the object. Test Complete needs to know the name of the object we want to interact with. And it's shown in a hierarchy view in the test workspace. So you can see the name here consists of process, window, window button. And that display kind of conveys the whole name, which is process, process calc plus, window, side calc, window, side calc, and window, button five, for example. So whilst it's shown in a hierarchy in this workspace view, it's actually referring to the full name of the object here, which is sys.processcalc.window.window.button5. And that naming convention is one of three main naming conventions in Test Complete, and it's referred to as the full name. So it's actually referring to your object starting at the sys object, account plus process, a window, and then the window button object. There are two other ways, as I mentioned, one is called name mapping and one is called aliases, and we'll look at those in the name mapping module at a later stage. For now though, just bear in mind, if you want to refer to an object, all you need to do, select the object, look for the full name, or look for the name up here, copy the name here, and that's the naming convention you can use to refer to the object in your keyword tests or your scripted tests. So that's the basics of objects, properties and methods. In the next module, we're going to look at creating our first keyword tests. And those concepts of objects, properties and methods are going to be absolutely key for creating those keyword tests.